Ryan Reynolds has to be the most powerful man in Hollywood. Somehow, he convinced Disney to make this movie. This movie. What the f***? No, seriously. This movie is bonkers. Here are my immediate thoughts on Deadpool and Wolverine. Hey everyone, it's Lenny here. So I just got out of Deadpool and Wolverine. I just saw it in IMAX. So this is just going to be an off the cuff, just kind of free form, immediate thoughts of the film. And yeah, this movie was just absolutely insane. So I got to the theater, the theater was absolutely packed, there was not an empty seat in there, and it was just an absolutely engaged audience. There was one guy that was like three or four seats to the left of me, and he was just actively, I mean the theater was cheering in certain parts, but there was one guy and he was pumping his fist, he was, he was in it man, he was, and I was like, hey good for you dude, because this is if I'm gonna say anything right off the bat about this movie, I guess it's two things really. It is a super fan servicey, fist pumping, entertaining popcorn movie experience. And if that's what you're looking for in a Deadpool movie, when it comes to that character, then you are going to get everything you paid for, and then sell. If you are someone that is like, Marvel is just too jokey jokey, and it's just too many jokes, and is just not as serious as it used to be, and you know, yeah, this, this is going to be, this is going to be a super successful movie, but I think it is also going to be divisive. Within the first five minutes of this movie, you know what you're in for. And really by that point, it's like, you know this is, this is Deadpool and this is a Deadpool movie. And Ryan Reynolds has portrayed him in a certain light, you know, what he believes is comic accurate and he's, following that pattern so by this point by the third you know if you're in here by the third Deadpool movie you sort of know what you're getting into so at the same time it may be overload or overkill for some so I'm, I'm trying to be as as objective as I can in in that respect now for me personally I love the fuck out of this movie. I, I really did. This, I'll, I'll just get right into the, the plot. So basically, Wade Wilson, uh, Deadpool, Ryan Reynolds, he's kind of put his days of being Deadpool behind him and he's really in, in a, he's stuck in a ride. He's kind of in a midlife crisis. He's selling used cars with, with Peter and he's, he's having like, you know, like him, his, his relationship with, with Vanessa is, is strained and he's living in a, uh, a one bedroom apartment with, with Blind Al and shit's just, you know, it's, he's just in a, in a bad spot um, emotionally. And they throw him, all of his, all of his friends throw him a birthday party. And, and he, this, you see this in, in the trailer, he's wearing that crazy, crazy wig and everything like that. And the TVA shows up. So for those that are the initiated, I'm just going to real quick. TVA is a group of individuals or uh, they, 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 they're, they're, they're in uh, the, the show Loki um, that had uh, two seasons on, on Disney+. Plus. Um, and there, there's a, a thread and, and the plot, there's like plot threads, um, you know, that, that surround Loki that's kind of connected to this. But I will say that the movie did a good job where I don't think 
you needed to watch Loki. I think it did a good job of introducing the TVA in a way where it's like, you don't need, you, you, you kind of understand, okay, you know who they are right off the bat. They throws a little bit of exposition and you kind of see how things work. You kind of see the rules and everything really quickly. And you, you're really thrown into the whole world of the TVA really quickly. This is one of those things I'll say about this movie. It is, it is non-stop. This is, and, and this is for me, this is how I feel, why I feel this movie works for me on, uh, on a construction level. This is a superhero movie that is disguised as a parody of a superhero movie while also paying homage to the superhero genre. It's like... The, the Zucker brothers, the like Abrams and Zucker, like that, that did like Airplane and, and Top Secret and, and The Naked Gun. Like if they did a parody of a superhero movie and with them, their jokes, they just go nonstop. They're just banging all the time. And it's like they would be using Ryan Reynolds and the character of Deadpool as the conduit of firing off all of these jokes and they just keep coming in. This is one of the most R-rated movies I have seen. I mean, man, this movie earns its R rating. If you're in, in terms of like action and violence and gore, if you're a fan of a show like The Boys, on uh, on Amazon Prime. Fuck man. This is you you get everything that that you ask for in and and then some. There are some action scenes in this movie that are absolutely outstanding and, and Sean Le Levy uh as a as a director just just again in terms of the construction and and the, the fight choreography and and you know the the stunt choreography I, I give a shout out to them all of that shit is top shelf there are i mean the the the, the main thing you know the, the crux of this movie and you know what makes this movie so successful is the the chemistry between Deadpool and Wolverine Ryan Reynolds and and Hugh Jackman and you know they there's a there's a couple of fight scenes between these guys and they are insane. And it's it's funny because Hugh Jackman as Logan, as Wolverine, you know, he's playing, you know, the character straight. And Logan and Wolverine as, as a straight character, he's always angry. He's pissed. He's a loner. You know, that's that's the core of, of his character. So he doesn't want any part of Deadpool. So Deadpool, you know, tries to drag him into this this whole plot thread of trying to save, you know, Deadpool's own world and his own universe. Wolverine wants no no part of this. So the the, the fights that, that they're having, he's he's just full of rage and he's angry, but Deadpool at certain times it, it's it's like he's kind of turned on. There is this weird homo I mean Deadpool you know sexually is you know all, all over the place but but there are scenes where, where it's like Deadpool is is definitely a, a sadomasochist and, and yeah and some of that shit how some of how those fight scenes between uh, Deadpool and Wolverine how they play it are ridiculous there are some action scenes um, some some fight scenes that are absolutely gorgeous to look at. Some single, t there, Sean Levy clearly watched Old Boy um, for for one sequence, but it's still done in, in an absolutely breathtaking way, and still you know it's it's its own thing. It, it fits within the scope and universe of Deadpool, and that's kind of the thing with the the story. And I'm gonna say kind of like for the the fan servicey nature of it so yes this is a very fan servicey movie 
and yeah, you're going to hear about it. You know, there, there are surprises and there are characters that are revealed in this movie. I am not revealing anything. I'm not even going to try to hint at them. But man, some of them that came out were just absolutely wild. There was one that the theater legitimately cheered for. Um, yeah, it was it was crazy. But this is yeah a a very fan servicey film. But because it's played within the universe of Deadpool, who is a fourth wall breaking just chatterbox just never shuts the fuck up and he's always in on the joke and always you know brings the audience in on legitimately one point he like grabs the camera and like like headbutts the camera i mean you know but that all of that plays within the context of the universe so all of these surprises and everything makes sense it and it's and like i said it's crazy um that this movie i i really feel pulled that off well because th this movie goes in so many crazy directions it, because it's a deadpool movie it plays with time at, at certain point it play you know the the violence is just so over the top again though the fourth wall breaking the the script and the the rapid fire nature of it and you know at the same time there's still a, a heart to it on, on on a couple fronts so one with ryan reynolds playing deadpool you know the the one thing that that i really appreciated is there is actual legitimate growth for the character of wade wilson he wants to be when when, when the movie begins he is in a bad place and he wants to better himself and he wants to better himself you know for for Vanessa and he wants to prove to Vanessa that he's he's worth something and he wants to you know one of his things is he wants to join the Avengers and that's not a spoiler everyone that's that's just kind of like the thing he's in being invited to to the MCU that's the main plot point of of the of the movie and you know he he wants to be a great superhero and he's he even says he wants to be more than just deadpool you know the, he wants to be more than just the merc with the mouth you know anymore he, he there's 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 a self-realization that i did really despite all of the madness and depravity in in this movie there is still this this center to to wade wilson and how Ryan Wilson portrays him in, in certain moments that I feel are really genuinely earned that that shows that yeah he wants to be more than just this super ultra violent I mean he is still that at his core but he wants to be more he wants to grow and and become like a real superhero and and mean something so so that was really appreciated now on top of that there is Hugh Jackman and his portrayal of, of Wolverine and like I said he wants nothing to do with um with Deadpool and at the same time the the, the Deadpool or the the Wolverine that uh, that Deadpool finds is this absolutely broken broken shell of of a man and the the things that that happened in his un, in his universe or in his world that that destroyed it you know there, there there's this weight of guilt and regret and he's you know just he's he's an addict you know he's he's an alcoholic you know and and the, the movie never downplays that. I mean, there's a moment where he goes for a bottle of rubbing alcohol and he downs that shit. So the movie takes that, that shit really seriously. And Hugh Jackman, for me, is kind of the heart and soul of, of the movie. And, you know, because he plays things straight, it works because 
Deadpool is so out there and and Logan is just like, I want, you know, fuck off, dude. And they play off of each other so well. It's it is the team up that that yeah, we've been waiting like 20 some odd years for. But but this really feels like that it's genuinely earned because the chemistry between these guys is is insane and the movie obviously works because of them and you know if the chemistry you know the comic timing and you know the the fight scenes and and you know everything like that between them if all of that stuff didn't work then this movie would fall flat on its face but no they're together they are amazing they you carry this movie on their backs and yeah it's it's great and Hugh Jackman I mean you know for for someone for someone who has played a comic book character and he's played Wolverine you know since 2000 I think that's when X-Men uh, came out so it's like 24 24 years he's been playing the same comic book character it is truly impressive both as an on-screen character and as an actor to see the growth of Wolverine or Logan. And Hugh Jackman is, he's an absolutely brilliant actor and what he brings to the table to, to this character of Wolverine, this iteration of Wolverine is like, I mean, for me, like the, the it's like, the performance he did in Logan, and then the performance he did in Deadpool and Wolverine. I mean, it's a toss-up because both performances in both movies are fucking top shelf. And I'm I'm gonna say for me, if he got nominated for an Oscar because he's he is that fucking good in this movie. If he got nominated for an Oscar, I wouldn't be mad. I would not be mad. He is that good in this movie. Um, he, and, you know, he, yeah, he, he's just able to bring so much depth, you know, to, to this character. And like I said, it's just, it just feels like, you know, what, what we as, as comic book nerds, what we've been asking for in, in terms of like, the, just even the costume you know, how it's been comic book accurate. And now we're seeing that, yeah, you can take comic book accurate costumes and, and you know, apply it to, to movie costume design and make it work and make it look functional. And the costume design in, in this movie for, for, for everyone, um, you know, worked so well. And, and yeah, kudos, kudos to that. So there are two villains in this movie uh, Mr. Paradox, played by Matthew McFadden, and Cassandra Norma, played by Emma Corrin. And so I don't want to reveal too much about one of the villains. The other one, Mr. Paradox, he's the one that's involved in the TVA, and he, it, you know, he brings Deadpool in to, you know, save the, you know, sacred timeline where the, the main MCU is and, and everything like that. Cassandra Norma, she is involved with another another MCU or another Marvel character I'm not going to reveal too much but the the villains in in this movie are are pretty good Mr. Paradox he starts out first as sort of you know this this mysterious you know villainous kind of of person but he's he's actually pretty funny Matthew Mc, Mc, um, McFadden is actually pretty funny and, and he kind of turns him into this kind of ridiculous character by the by the time the movie is is over. Um, Cassandra Nova is I, I, I liked her and, and I wish the movie did more with her and that's all I'm going to say. And I guess that's you know it's it's like Marvel is doing some of the best stuff with its with this movie in terms of like the fan service and the storytelling and the the emotional beats but you know there's that there there's that one problem that always seems to get them and it's it's the villain issue and and it's not based off of the acting of of Aaron Corrin I thought she was really good I thought she was really strong and I liked the character and I liked her motivation again I just wish there was more done 
and, and yeah, and, and that's all I can say. And and if I do a, a spoiler review, maybe I'll get more in, into that. But um, yeah, this this movie was was just absolutely absolutely bonkers. The the comedy, I mean, the the theater was just just howling at certain moments. There is one joke that made me so proud to be a Canadian and when you see it you will know and everyone in the theater was basically going Canada fuck yeah the best there is the best there was and the best there ever will be yeah this this movie was was insane it is absolutely madcap it is audacious it is violent so gory violent to the point of i mean some people i mean are, are gonna see this and be like this is this is over the top but again for a deadpool movie i believe or for my my opinion anyways it, it, it tracks but yeah it is it still for me has has a heart and i think like with with the first Deadpool, it, it had that that anchor um, with with the 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 relationship between uh, uh, Wade and, and Vanessa. Um, Deadpool Two was I still liked it, but it didn't. It was missing that emotional element. But but here, it seemed to like bring that back and and it how things come come together. Um, yeah, it, I, I I really think it's. And one of the really cool things that this movie did as well is it's a nice kind of swan song to 20th Century Fox and that version of of the Marvel movies on on that end. I'm, again, I'm not going to get too much much more into that. And and I'll I'll say this too, it it, it kind of felt like. It felt like Deadpool was was more willing to go hard on Disney than than on Fox. I don't know. That's maybe that's that's how I saw it. But it, but but it, but but still, it was it was still cool be, because it was like you know what you you kind of there there's kind of like a nice nostalgic feeling because you, it was like yeah you know some of the, the some of the movies were, were trash but some of the ideas the germ of of some of the ideas and and i remember the feeling of yeah i remember when when these movies did come out i remember being excited about seeing these particular characters on screen so you know seeing them again in in this particular context was really cool and really rewarding as a fan and i think that is one of those and that's why this is a definite fan servicey movie because it's not just like you have to know like movies from just the mcu and you're like really deep into that because it is you know very much an mcu movie you have you know you definitely have to know a lot of the lore of the mcu but you also have to know a little bit about the 20th century side of of Marvel, so it's like a there there are deep cuts, and so if you are a fan of those movies, or if you have nostalgic feelings for those films, I think you'll find a lot to appreciate. And the, and the movie gave a really nice, I, I I feel like nod to to those movies. I I really I really like that. But yeah, that I've been talking about this movie for like 24 minutes and i really hope i haven't given anything away but this movie yeah is like i said is is bonkers it definitely showed marvel how to do a multiverse movie um so we'll see what what's gonna happen if we're gonna still move forward with with uh with kang and uh you know how that's going to all play out yeah there's there's so much to unpack with this movie and for me i didn't feel the time 
for this movie. I don't even know how long this movie is. I need to like look, but I never felt the runtime for this movie. It just, like I said, this this movie was just nonstop. It was just nonstop. But yeah, I mean, if I'm going to give a, a rating for for this movie, I mean, this is one of and and for me too, comedy wise, this is one of the absolute funniest movies of the year for me. I mean, this was this was a baller move by Ryan Reynolds to convince Disney to to even conceive of this movie. And, and there there's a post credit scene. So I'll just say that. So so definitely stay to stay to the end, but the craziest thing to take away from all of this and this isn't a spoiler but it is the ultimate ribbon the ultimate bow the last credit you see is released by Walt Disney fucking studios not the fuck it's not in there it should have been but and, and just sitting there, and I think a lot of people in the theater sat there and saw that, and I think it blew a lot of people's minds collectively in that moment. So, yeah, take that with that, what, what, what you will. And, and one one last thing, too, before I, I, I go off. The needle drops in, in this movie, the, the music cues, I mean, chef's kiss, they're, they're, they're outrageous. But yeah. Um, if I'm going to give a, a rating for this movie, yeah, this is, this is one of my favorite movies of the year. Um, I mean, right below a prestige, um, I, I really, this is like the highest, highest of blockbusters. I mean, I'm, I'm going to see this again and honestly, maybe I, maybe I will give this a low prestige, but my initial gut i'm saying i'm giving this the highest of highest of blockbusters see this movie see this in imax this movie is going to probably break some box office records this weekend i am not going to be surprised if this movie becomes the second billion dollar movie of 2024 after inside out 2 and for me, I'm going to say, fuck it, man. You guys earn that bag. You guys earn that shit. Um, but yeah, no, this movie for me as, as a fan, I mean, clearly was fucking balls. It's tremendous. Yeah. See it. See it. But those are my truly, truly immediate thoughts about Deadpool and Wolverine. What did you guys think of the movie? Share your thoughts, leave your comments, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you can get notifications as well. Thanks a lot, everyone. Take care.